All stations, Mumbai Control, how do you read? Radio 5, Victor Tango, Victor Kilo Delta. Radio 5, Victor Tango, Mike India Echo. Radio 5, Victor Tango, no Mumbai India Kilo. Radio 5, Victor Tango, November Alpha Nagan. Radio 5, Mumbai Ground. Okay, so very good afternoon, Mukul. I see you. Very good afternoon, Nandini. I cannot see you. Vivek, Nikki, Sujal, I cannot see you all. All right, Vivek, I can see you. Good. All stations, how do you read? Radio 5, Mike and Echo. Radio 5. Nandini, I can see you. Good afternoon. Nikki and Sujal, can you read me? Radio 5, sir. Hi, Sujal, long time. Nice to see you. Okay, so what I was saying uh, that I have seen your results. Uh, you have scored well. This is what happens when uh, you give a lot of different topics at the same time. Confusions will happen. Although these questions are directly from the notes that we have referred. Questions will be twisted and turned in many ways. Mukul shared a question about VSI from RK Bali talking about ground effect. So if you refer other notebooks, you will see there will be more questions in other notebooks. Sometimes the topics that you have studied, sometimes with respect to certain topics that you have not studied. Okay. Right now, our focus is on the major topics that we have studied in, as per our syllabus. So uh, Mukul, the questions that you didn't give right answers. What happened? Share your uh, feedback with me. Two or three questions, I got confused with your options. Okay. Because it seems similar. Or one is more relevant or one is not. So that was. Uh -huh. And one was with related to constant cast. Uh -huh. And that I was unable to understand. Uh -huh. And mistake or true attitude, that question, I made a mistake in calculation. Okay. So, after looking at the correct answers, were you able to work out your mistakes? Uh, for... Mukul, I read you one. Vive, give me a read back. Radio 5. 
Okay, Mukul, say something. I just lost your voice. Mughal, try to do a readability check quickly. Google radio one. Nandini, give me a readability check. Radio five. Okay. Fine. Vivek, what about your doubts? Uh, sir, I had forget permissible limit accuracy. And there was a question. I'm searching it. Which, which I'm sending it. No, with the, the same question, the question that I was asking to Mukul, I'm asking the same question. Were you able to understand what went wrong? Yes, sir. After you saw the solution. Yes, sir. But there was a question which I had not understand. What does the but, question mean? But the accuracy uh, limitation for VSI, I know which question you're talking about. That question we have, uh, we have made clear notes. That question is there in class notes also. And yes, sir, I got this one, but talking about another. Uh huh. Question number. Sir, wait, I have to search it. So you should keep it handy. Okay, you should keep it handy. It should not take you so long. Yeah, only four questions. I can see all those four questions. Anyway, Mukul, what were you saying? Please continue. Mukul, you are on mute now. So the question related to constant that I was unable to understand.
because you are on mute. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I can hear you now. I thought you were listening to me. Yeah, I just wanted you to unmute. Good. Yeah, so please continue. Uh, Vivek, hold on to that question. Uh, so, Hussain, what, uh, Mukul, what were you talking about? So, I was talking about question number 17 that is related to constant gas. The question I was unable to understand even after the solution. Here, the question is an aircraft maintaining a constant gas and altitude is flying from a cold air mass to a warmer air. Basically, gas can be your task if your airspeed is less than 300 knots, correct? So let's not get confused with something that let's not think that it's something that we don't know the first connection second thing in the question they are telling us the gas is constant it means you're not into acceleration you're maintaining your speed it could be 150 it could be 200 it could be 250 okay whatever word it is constant you're maintaining that speed and altitude you are not climbing or descending you're maintaining a standard altitude. All right. Then it tells you from temp low temperature to high temperature. Now, what is the effect of change of temperature on the speed? They are telling us you're moving from cold weather to warm weather, low temperature to high temperature. What will happen? To your airspeed indication. They're talking about TAS. TAS is the actual airspeed. So they are just asking us whether our instrument is over reading or under reading. So is the TAS more or is the TAS less? That is the meaning of the question to ask you, but the terms given to you are different. But you can transform it into that and see what will happen to your true airspeed. Now, what do we do with true airspeed? One more thing we know, CAS will be true airspeed when we apply which error? There are two error corrections that we can apply. Density we apply if it is less than 300. If it is not less than 300, then we apply compressibility and then density to get TAS. Here they are just asking us, will the TAS be more than CAS or less than CAS? Now, do we have anything with respect to that in the notes? Do we have a formula for TAS? A CAS plus density error is TAS, something like that. Is there something that again gives us a hint to work out this answer? Or the other hint that we already discussed could be whether our TAS is more than CAS or less than CAS. Now, considering these two points, try to think what could be the answer. Try to look at the note. If the altitude is same, okay. If the temperature is from low to high, it means the density is reducing because cold temperature, the density is high. So warmer temperature, the density will be low. So if the density is low, is the density being added to CAS or subtracted from CAS to give us TAS? Look at that equation. Who can tell me what is that equation? There is one equation talking about CAS, TAS and density error. Check your notes. Mukul, are you following? Yes. So this is how we try to recollect our answers to questions that we don't directly understand. Trust me, the logic will always be the same, but the question language will be like this different here and there. But if you don't know the direct answer, what do you do? You try to look at and convert what you know into what is there in the question. And then you will see things come to us. So what is the formula? Is it CAS minus density error or CAS plus density error? Simple. Who can give me? Vivek? This is for everyone. So CAS plus density error. CAS plus? Density error. Will give you TAS? Yes, sir. 
जीत कैश प्लस डेंसिटी एरर गिव अस टास एंड कैश प्लस कंप्रेसिबिलिटी विल गिव इक्विवेलेंट नो आई वांट दैट इक्वेशन देयर इज अ इक्वेशन राइट quickly we should be quick in referring why is everybody not talking nandini what's the equation cash plus density error will give task cash plus density error will give you task right now we have a density error it will be added that is one hint which will determine a correct answer that task will increase Because stars, when density error is there, it is the density error is added. So right now there is a density error because of change in temperature. So the error is added to the speed that is cas, and what we get is an increased stars. A simple equation can give us that answer. Right now we don't even have to take any assumptions and try to work it out in the nav calc or something. This is this is the base of this question actually. nothing more because no other value is given to you no other description is given to you in the text okay did anybody else have this doubt with this question yes sir yeah usain so say if you go cold to warm so the density increases or decreases sorry say again you tell me that you tell me for the same altitude What will happen, Mukul, for the same altitude? It should decrease, right? Density will decrease. Cold to warm. Density will decrease. Yes, density will decrease for the same altitude. So, sir, density will decrease. You are right. Everyone is right. Nikki, are you following? You are not acknowledging. Yes. Good, good, good. So, Hussain, uh. i'll come to you for your doubts quickly let's be very fast guys uh, and girls please be very fast right now let's try to be fast do everything very quickly and see if it works for us mukul what about your other doubts i have no other doubts i have made the other mistake so i know what anything difficult for you to logically understand that you think will be a challenge and what about the correct answers how was the experience was it easy to give correct answers uh it took little time to uh, understand what is the question okay so your overall experience how was it for air data instruments uh so it was not very good it was good experience. but you passed right you scored about 70 yeah it's 33 so it may be around 80 or 80 around, yeah around 80 i think 82 not bad that is very good actually that is very good so uh, i want everybody to hear okay because if i set expectations right now then we would don't have to discuss this again so uh, uh mukul how do you think you could have worked out the additional seven questions why did you lose those points was it due to silly mistakes lack of revision or questions being too hard uh maybe due to lack of revision i'll say again so mukul the seven Radio ones. How do you read now? Uh, radio fives. Yeah, so I'm asking uh, the questions that you could not give correct answers. Was it due to silly mistakes? Was it because lack of revision, or was it because the questions were just too hard? Uh, because of my silly mistakes and little bit of lack of revision. So that can be sorted with time. no issue with experience good very good i am happy to see 
uh, i hope everybody has given an oh, closed book test honestly but i think students who already are a step ahead and read through oxford before me would have seen these questions so i think vivek hussain and nikki might have already seen these questions if i am not wrong vivek Yeah, so I was asking, Nikki Hussain, had you already seen these questions in Oxford? Yes, sir. Hmm. Only a few. I give emphasis on theory, so I don't remember questions. Okay, fine. So when you were giving the test, were you able to realize that the questions have come from the textbook that you have already seen? Nikki, I'm asking you. Yes, sir. Okay. So, was it easy for you to answer, or was it difficult? Sir, little bit easy or little bit difficult. Okay. Hussain, how about you? So it was uh, same. I gave emphasis on theory only. Okay. The question is, was it easy for you to answer or not? That is the point. A little bit, not much. All stations, how do you read? Radio 5. Radio 5. Hmm. Radio 5. Vivek, I was asking you, have you, had you seen the questions before? Uh, no, sir. The question was 31. Yeah, what is the doubt about 31? Sir, what the question means? Read the question. What is the confusion in the question? In the international standard atmosphere, the mean sea level pressure is dash the lapse rate of temperature 
is dash the mean sea level and dash and is isothermal up to the dash the number missing are yeah so read you you did not read the part after sea level pressure is dash the lapse rate of temperature is dash between mean sea level and dash and is isothermal up to so they are asking the lapse rate starting from mean sea level up to a certain limit do you all remember i was saying that the lapse rate continues in isa up to 36000 feet in the option we have 36097 feet yes sir that is 11 kilometers and after that the temperature remains the same that is isothermal and the temperature remains same the value of that is 66000 correction 65617 feet this was not given to you in navigation class bus but this is the point up to which the temperature is isothermal a vertical distance isothermal mean it doesn't change after that uh, temperature that amazing again that is how the construction of atmosphere is do you understand the question now yes sir but you have given a correct answer how did yes, you sir, manage to give a correct answer there was only two option which are looking correct the third and first correct fortunately it was correct very But good that was i was not calculated sure. guess that was a good calculated guess everybody remember this point for isa the temperature is isothermal from 36000 to 65000 feet okay that is a um, additional value that you have to remember about isa for jet standard atmosphere the lapse rate is 2 degrees per 1000 feet and the temperature keeps falling there is no inversion layer inversion layer is where the temperature changes lapse rate changes from reduction to increase okay what are the doubts vivek how was your experience uh, sir i don't have any other doubts so Was why did you use on a question about leak leak in the pitot give me the question number on a non pressurized non pressurized aircraft question number 33 but i got it now good 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 total pressure leak will remove the expansion of the capsule so it will underheat simple no matter what the case is it will underheat if the total pressure is blocked or leaked so that is the point there so why do you think you lost a few marks same question like mukul lack of revision silly mistakes or questions being too difficult yes sir what is the reason sir the first question about permissible limit i had it although i had wrote this but not revise this point okay fine what else quickly vivek no the doubt sir good good scores you scored the highest for this test so i'm very happy to see that but i hope everybody is giving me uh, submissions honestly uh, high and low in class really doesn't matter much what really matters is how you perform in the exams but it does show us where we stand that's how it matters and tell us what we need to work upon and improve upon even if you're getting four incorrect answers or 20 incorrect answers or 25 incorrect answers we know why we were not able to give the answers you as a student will know was it because the co the concepts are too confusing the language is too difficult to understand maybe i could not study enough maybe i was just in a rush maybe i need to revise again before i can give the test again are we following afam 
yeah so this is why it is important us to understand why now i come to jeet yes sir let's just get done this with exercise topic jeet how do you read read you too sir how do you read now read you five okay so what i'm asking you jeet uh, what are your doubts so i like two three silly mistakes and one i didn't get was uh, when aircraft is flying from cold air mass to warmer one the tassel increase yeah we just discussed yeah. this doubt were you there to attend yeah but i like uh, came in in the middle of it yeah mukul can you give the uh, resp- the understanding of this question for jeet and everyone else no mukul uh, jeet can you read out the question number please oh uh, yeah just a second at a constant cas and an altitude when the aircraft is moving from a cold air mass to a higher warmer air mass what will be the effect so as we move as we see if we move from warmer air mass to colder air sorry from colder air mass to warmer air mass the density at the same altitude will reduce uh, so in the warmer air mass the dens- density of the air will be less uh, so there so, exists a density error correct yeah, and the formula so, is cas plus density error gives you tas so we understand the density error is always added to the cas and with that understanding we can say that the tas has increased as per the option uh but so that will be uh, on the indication right because in less density there will be uh, worse performance than in, we would have in better higher density right no right now the value is the question is not asking about what is the variation in density has the density reduced or the density increased they're just asking what is the effect of change in temperature and the effect on of the change in indication right are they the are not talking about speed. the indication also so this question basically uh if you say then uh if you have not applied for the correction then your cas will be your indicated air speed actually in real real life whatever you see on the instrument is what you observe you don't do any manual calculations but when we learn we talk about these errors because it is important for us to understand the indicated is different than the true air speed okay in this question they are talking about the theoretical level not the flight level they may they made some assumptions and they are saying what will happen to your task so that you can expect with that respect you can say that maybe the indicated air speed will be more so the task will be more than the calibrated air speed that is the only explanation then so to answer your question probably they are talking about the indicated air speed here what you will see will be a little more than it means the asi is over reading in that point hmm okay so that could be an understanding here but with relationship to the notes and the question the relationship is based upon this formula only right now 
CAS plus density error will give you TAS. So TAS increases if you have any density error. The density error is happening because of the difference in temperature. Now they can reverse this question and say, if you're traveling from warmer air to the colder air, and what will happen, then probably the TAS would decrease over there. Mm. So that way you can derive a relationship as to what happens in density error. If the density reduces, my TAS increases. If my density increases, my TAS decreases. With this one point, you can derive all these points because it's not clearly mentioned in notes, but the question is given to us. So question number 31 can definitely give you more answers to more questions. So looking at this, try to derive other possibilities. So it means warmer to cold, the density error is obviously added, but probably the density error is in negation minus or so plus minus will give me minus and the tax will reduce there. So if my density decreases from my actual density, my TAS increases. And if my density increases, my TAS decreases. All these points can be derived from that one point. Are we all following? This is a little so extra, but this can be useful. Yeah, Hussain. So if my density increases, so as per the formula, uh, the density correction would be more, right? ASI reading ASI reading is a function of dynamic pressure. Okay. And your dynamic pressure formula is half rho V square. The reason your increasing density or uh, decreasing density is giving me more tasks is because the density has the number half over there. Now this is an inverse relationship. Density reduces by half, the velocity becomes square, half rho v square. Okay. Are we, are we all on the same page? Are we understanding what I'm trying to say? Hussain, are you following? Yes, sir. Thus, if your density reduces, your air, air, aircraft velocity increases. That is the indication. Because half rho, half density and V square, density reduces by half, the air speed will increase by square value. This is known as inverse square law. So in this case, your density at that altitude was decreasing. So your actual air speed increases. That is again, another explanation based upon the value or the formula of dynamic pressure. And the dynamic pressure is what? Dynamic pressure gives us the airspeed indication. Are you following Hussain? This point? So uh, half is constant, right? Won't it be directly proportional? Half is not pressure. constant Hussain. You're not listening. It's an inverse square law relationship. The half value and the square value in the formula describes that if the density reduces by half, the velocity increases by the square value. That is the meaning over there. You understand what I'm saying? The number is not defining the square or the correction. The number is not defining the coefficient. The number is not a coefficient. It shows the inverse square law relationship in the dynamic pressure value. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Is everybody listening? These are points in depth, this should be helpful to everyone. Hussain, are you understanding? Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Please acknowledge. Yes, I want you to talk about your doubt and clarify. All this information will help you clarify the doubt. Mukul, are you getting what I'm saying? Firm, sir. Do you understand now why, why our task is increasing in that question? Yes. There are multiple explanations. We were earlier talking about the explanation with respect to this, but now we have understood the explanation in depth. Please remember this. You might get questions on this point, not the same question, but different questions.
this is interesting is because the density has reduced and the formula for dynamic pressure says if the density reduces your aircraft velocity increases by square v square is the aircraft velocity half rho is the air density it's the inverse square law relationship so remember that these numbers are important and see if your basic is strong and if you are habituated to working out questions in different ways by thinking logically you will never have problems in solving navigation because it's more of a general knowledge thing then if you understand the basis you should never be worried you should only be worried about okay have you covered the basic points about all topics yeah that is important if we don't know about mass and balance then we will not know the logic to answer so that is a point of concern but if you know the points of air data instruments thoroughly it's only a matter of thinking and connecting the dots to answer and the answers will come to you if you don't rush okay husain don't feel we are arguing if you have still not understood please share also, with me uh, i'm thinking you are not comparing it with dynamic pressure right sorry say again are you comparing it with dynamic pressure comparing what uh, the density yeah but why are we talking about dynamic pressure jit why are we talking about i explained this usain are you not listening carefully is no, it sir, i understood the part of uh, half density and increase no, but why are we talking about dynamic pressure nikki why are we talking about dynamic pressure so it has an inverse relationship with uh... no Vector angle November India kilo. No, no, sir. But we weren't talking about dynamic pressure. No, but why are we talking about dynamic pressure? Nikki, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Why do you think we are talking about dynamic pressure? Sujal, can you talk? Sir, because half rho v square. No, that's that's fine. Point. No, no, no. Vivek, Mukul. Because the dynamic pressure depends on density. Aha, uh -huh. Mukul. That gives air speed indication. Yeah, I just said it. Air speed indication is directly a function of the amount of dynamic pressure. right total pressure minus static pressure gives you what dynamic pressure right didn't we read it in our notes air speed indication is nothing but the measure of dynamic pressure but there is no way of measuring dynamic pressure directly husain this is why we are talking about dynamic pressure here because your cas your tas everything is nothing but the measurement of your dynamic pressure and the reason your tas is more is because the dynamic pressure sensed by the asi is more why is it more because density is less how is that density increasing your dynamic pressure because the formula for dynamic pressure is half rho v square if the density increases the velocity decreases if the density decreases velocity increases the combined effect will give me a dynamic pressure so if my density is smaller my dynamic pressure will be more because dynamic density is divided by 2 over there you understand why why we are talking because it's an inverse square law relationship and what is the value of v square in the formula of dynamic pressure nandini what is the meaning of v square is it air velocity or aircraft velocity velocity sorry say again aircraft velocity aircraft velocity it's the aircraft speed husain are you connecting the link everyone yes. why are we talking about dynamic pressure here and why is the reduced cold to warm the density on the same altitude is reducing so why is my tas increasing because my dynamic pressure is increasing 
if you don't understand this logic then common sense will tell you that my dynamic pressure will increase if my density is increasing because density should give you more more density should give you more pressure right but that is only for static pressure that is not for dynamic pressure the value for dynamic pressure is different half rho v is square half rho means if the density reduces by half the velocity of the aircraft increases by square half rho v square that is the meaning a very important formula and this relationship inverse squared law is a very simple relationship if something reduces by half the other thing increases by the square value hussain following affirm sir vivek sujil jeet simple question mukul was able to give because i just said it i said it even now maybe i don't know if it's the network error or what but don't forget it now okay why dynamic pressure because air speed is the measurement of dynamic pressure simple this is why we are talking about dynamic pressure you need to connect these dots to make sense of what is happening once you can make sense trust me you'll always come with right answers feel free to discuss okay this even one one point and one one question is very important for us mukul your scores are good vivek your scores are good uh sparsh is not there in class all stations how do you read radio 5 okay nandini what are your doubts did you have a tough time solving yes sir some most of them i did like sorry say again most of them most of them i did like silly mistakes in that some question do you want to discuss any question No, sir. I understood all, and then I had doubt in seventeen, which you discussed, and then in question number seven, like there are three blanks of the which the last blank I didn't get. Can you read out question number seven? I'm pulling it up, but the system is slow right now to open the question paper. Yes, sir. an aircraft has one altimeter set to QFP and has one to aerodrome. QNH thousand hectopascal. If the airfield elevation is three hundred feet immediately before takeoff, the altimeter with QFP set will read dash, and the other dash. If the QFP altimeter is set to one zero one three when passing through the transition alti altitude, two thousand feet, it will read dash. Hmm. A lot of numbers, a lot of information given. So, did you not understand the entire question or a part of it? So, just the last blank, I didn't get the answer. Okay, wait. I'll tell you. Anybody? Anybody else having this doubt? Yes, sir. Hussain and Nandini. How about others? Yes, sir. Sujal has this.
Mukul, you you were able to solve this question, right? And Jeet, how about you? Uh, I made a mistake, silly mistake, for calculating from where transition altitude is calculated. But I understood what that was a mistake. Hmm. Okay. Seven, right? An aircraft has an altimeter set to QFE and one to aerodrome QNH. Hmm. I'm still waiting for the whole question to come up. Uh, Okay, found it. Hmm. So everybody eyes on the question. Let's just look at it once. Such questions will come in the examination. So there are two altimeters. One is QFE and one is QNH. We know what is QFE. First thing. See, this is how you read. Okay. One, one thing you understand one by one. QFE will give me zero when I'm on ground. Okay. It is important to clear all obstacles near the aerodrome on the aerodrome. So my one instrument, if I'm on ground, one altimeter will give me zero. While the other is QNH. QNH means the local mean sea level pressure. It will show me the elevation of the aerodrome. Whether my aerodrome is 300 feet above mean sea level, 400 feet above mean sea level, or 200 feet above mean sea level. What is the pressure given to me for QNH? It's 1000 HPA. So my 1000 HPA is the pressure at mean sea level. If my elevation is 30 feet, it will mean my aerodrome pressure is 1001 HPA. How did I get this value? Because ISA tells me 30 feet increase at mean sea level will give me 1 HPA fall in pressure. Most accurate value is 27, but we can take 30 rounding it off. Is everybody aware of this? Mickey and Jeet, I cannot see you all. Yes, sir. I did not even read the whole question. This is how I look at every question. This is how I want you all to look at every question. Okay. Just the two things given to me, two things I really reminded myself. Okay. This is how I have to understand things. And okay. I understand how much I can calculate pressure with respect to elevation and certain things. Now let's read further. Now, if my air, airfield elevation is 300 feet, great. I thought about 30 feet. It is talking about 300 feet. It means how much HPA value change will be there from my QFE to QNH. We divide 300 by 30. We get 10. So there's a 10 HPA change. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Verbally, you are able to understand, right? Yes, yes. Good. Let's read the whole question. Immediately be before takeoff, the altimeter with QFE will read dash. So before takeoff, it means you're on ground. And other, what will the other read? The other will read elevation because it is on ground. Two points clear. Third, if the QFE altimeter is then set, Two one zero one three passing through the transition altitude, which is 3000. It will read what? So this point here, QFE altimeter will show zero on ground just before takeoff. QNH altimeter will show me elevation, which is 300 feet. Good. Now they are saying as you reach 3000 feet, that's a transition altitude. You change your QFE pressure setting to 1013. The moment you change it to 1013, it will give you pressure altitude. Okay. 3000 feet shown to you on the QFE was what? It was your actual height above ground. 3000 that you have crossed. You're crossing. Now you are setting the subscale to 1013. Now, there are two ways you can solve this. 
you can first think about what was the QFE pressure setting. The QFE pressure setting was 1010 HPA. How 1010 HPA? Because QNH is 1000, elevation is 30 feet. No, sir, the elevation is 300 feet. Elevation is 300 feet. The pressure should fall. So the fall in pressure would give me a QFE subscale setting of 9 or 9 or 0 HPA. That's why I'm asking you whether I'm giving you right or wrong. It will fall. So if I have set 9 or 9 or 0 on QFE to read 0, 9 or 9 or 0 on subscale to read 0, and then when I'm climbing and reaching 3000 feet on the same instrument I'm setting, the meaning of transition altitude is that you change from your QFE to QNE, that is 1013. That's what you do at transition altitude to get pressure altitude. So when you change it, what will it show you? It will show you more or it will show you less. First thing, it will definitely show you more. Why will it show you more? Because you were at 9900, your new subscale setting is at 1013. Your airport is at an eleva elevation of 300 feet. It is showing you from 300 feet that is height. So the altitude shown to you should be from mean sea level. It will mean it will also account for 300 feet over here. Plus one new thing will come into picture is let me show you on screen. It's a very good question. I'm, I'm glad you all are discussing different questions. This is how you can learn a little more than what's given to you in the syllabus and textbook because questions can come anyway. Let me share the screen and show you what I'm talking about now visually. So the key here, the logic here is to first remember that pressure falls with height. Pressure falls with height. Okay. This is my mean sea level. Okay, and this is my aerodrome. All right, what have they told us? My QNH is 1000 HPA. It means this is the pressure. My aircraft has two altimeters. Okay, one altimeter is at QNH and one is at QFE. So I know my QFE will read zero. My QNH is reading 300 feet. Why 300 feet? Because 300 feet is my elevation. So how do I measure my elevation? This height is 300 feet above sea level. My above mean sea level. Everything else is just water. So I'm showing you the land below water also because it will go much below the sea level. But for you, the measurement should be from this point like this. This is the elevation. How do you get this elevation? You get this elevation when you set your altimeter QNH, altimeter subscale to QNH value. The QNH value was 1000. 
it is giving you 300 feet. The other is QFE, which is giving you zero feet. Okay. Now, one thing you need to remember, rule of thumb, pressure falls when altitude increases. All right. I was talking about what will be my subscale setting for QFE altimeter. You know your QNH altimeter subscale is 100 HPA. I was talking about what will be your QFE subscale setting. Although it is not given to you in the question as to you have to give this answer. If you had to calculate, how will you calculate? So it will be, sorry, say again. By pressure change. By calculating the difference. Yeah, pressure between. change, but we don't know the pressure change. All we know is the elevation is 300 feet. So from 1000 feet, 1000 HPA, if I say zero feet, then reaching 300 feet, how much HPA will change? So we know. 1 HPA fall, okay, gives me 30 feet increase. Everybody write it down, okay? 1 HPA fall will give you 30 feet increase. So, 10 HPA fall will give me, give you how much? 300 feet increase. Here you have increased 300 feet. It means your HPA change is 10. So 1000 minus 10 will give you how much? 990 HPA. It means your subscale setting on QFE altimeter was 990 HPA. Did you see how did we get that? This can also come in your exams. Guys and girls, are we following? Yes, sir. Everybody yes. give me an acknowledgement with your call sign. Affirm Affirm Victor Tango, Victor Tango, Mike, 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 Mike,
the explanation it will be very useful for you all nikki are you following yes sir nandini are you following Yes, sir. Good. Sujal, Vivek, Jeet, Mukul. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. So now just look at it. Look at the extreme left. You need to. Your altimeter has to measure vertical distance with respect to one zero one three. How much will it be? It will be three thousand. This point. Plus, it will be three hundred. The elevation, plus it will be the distance from one zero 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 to one zero one three. In total, this is the vertical distance I need to measure. Is everybody following? It's just a simple calculation of adding and finding out. So we already know we have three thousand feet plus three hundred feet. Plus, we need to know the height difference between one thousand and one zero one three. How much 390. HPA change? One three HPA into thirty. It gives me three ninety feet. So I add three ninety feet here, and it gives me my answer that is three six nine zero feet. So is the correct the... Uh, the correct one in the options was like three three nine zero. Let me check your responses. Sir, we don't need to have. Sir, we don't need to add three hundred feet. Because there was only thirteen HPA pressure change. Uh huh. Let's see. No, so there is like twenty three HPA difference between nine ninety and one zero one three. So three six nine zero should be the right answer. No, no, no. Let let me explain why. Every everyone understood so far what we are doing. I cannot see the responses now. The form. Now, the key point here for us to focus is that this value of thirty correction three thousand feet is a transition altitude, and the moment when we say altitude. it means it's a vertical distance measured from the sea level and not the ground what is the new thing here transition altitude is equal to vertical distance from mean sea level it means this 30 feet uh, correction 30000 feet is not measured from the ground level but it is measured from the mean sea level this is the error that we work out now if in your question they would have given you crossing a height of 3000 feet you change the subscale of the qfe altimeter to 1013 then my earlier calculation would have been right i would have added the elevation and then i would have added the difference between the 1000 and 1013 and this point is clearly mentioned in your notes that in the exams the questions will have either feet or altitude and that word Correction: Height or altitude, and that word will change your calculation. So keep a lookout. Here they have given us transition altitude. Transition altitude means this. 
So we already have 3000 feet. All we need to add, because in this 3000, we already have what? The elevation. It means my height should be. Yeah, that's it. So you only add 3000, which includes the height and the elevation plus the remainder. The remainder is 390. So your answer becomes 3,390. So, so the transition altitude from the ground level is 2,700 uh, feet, right? From the ground level, it becomes height. So you will say the height of the transition altitude is 2,700 feet. The height, it means its measurement from ground will be 2,700 feet. And from sea level, it is already 3,000 feet. So this issue and the errors, they are very, very minute. It's like finding a needle in the haystack, but with practice, you will understand. Here, the logic, one logic initially we didn't cover was the meaning of transition altitude itself. We reverse calculated, but did you see in the options, we also have 3,690 as well as 3,390. They know these are the common mistakes students will make. And they will give you the options that will match with your incorrect calculations. Okay. Do you understand what I'm talking about right now? Mukul and Jeet, you have to be very careful because you will be giving the exam in a week's time. But it is not difficult once you understand the key. So the transition altitude. So it took us so much time to finally figure it out. But once you have figured it out, I don't think again you will ever have any problem now. Nandini, do you understand how did we solve? Because it was your major question. Then we had Sujal, then we had Hussain also talking about it. Yes, sir, I understood. Hussain, Sujal? Confirm, sir. Yes, sir, got it. Anybody wants to share why you had confusions to not come up with the correct answer? No? So I did not understand the question the last part. Do you understand it now? Yes, sir. Good. Jeet and Mukul, any confusion? No, sir. Uh, it was the same confusion as the 3000 from the ground or the sea level. It's cleared. The key word is altitude. That's why the definitions matter. The height, the altitude, the elevation. And these are there, right, with you? In the notes, they are there, right? The definitions are there, clearly. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is a very common mistake students make when the basics are not clear. We always have to remind ourselves what we're doing, whether it's right or wrong. But we, we learned the, the major reason for me to show you was that you can also find out the subscale setting for the QFE. And if you have measuring vertical height, then our calculation was right. If you're measuring altitude, then just count the elevation also. You don't have to add the elevation separately. And the one key point that will always help you remember is that understand higher the pressure, lower the altitude. So I made the purple line showing you 1013. It's easy for you to understand. Just make it below your QNH. If your QNH is more than one zero, if it's less than one zero one three, 
if your qnh is 1010 then the difference between isa and u is only of 3 hpa that is 90 feet so you will be 90 feet above the actual isa value following right so right now if they would have asked so they have, that's what they have asked right what's your actual altitude uh, when your pressure pressure subscale setting is the isa value so that's what you found out the isa level is 33900 but my actual level is 3000 so although you, although you are flying at actual vertical altitude of 3000 your altimeter will show you 33900 because that is the isa value so that's why your isa value will always be either less or more than your true altitude so here your indicated altitude is different than your true altitude your indicated altitude is 33900 while your true altitude is 3000 so altimeter is over reading right now see it all this can be changed into something else also talking about true altitude indicated altitude show us whether it's less or show us whether it's more everyone listening so yeah sir if you use the logic of 1000 like to pass it to 1013 low high low so it would be underrated right if you don't change your subscale then it will underread that's the meaning of that but if you have changed your subscale then it will just show you the pressure altitude and the pressure altitude is more so this this relationship is not talking about altimeter over reading or under reading this relationship is about the true altitude and the indicated altitude being more or less but see you said high low high and all those keys i am not teaching in the class because they cause some confusion there so whenever you are sharing any any key with me any doubt with respect to any key first share that key with me so that i can explain you with respect to that note also so there are certain there are many techniques to remember a lot of things so we remember it in a different way but you are referring a different technique then share with me so that you know i can teach you that technique also yeah so just share that with me after class or during the class so nikki you said you did not get the answers answer sheet yes sir i have not got your responses also maybe you have not submitted it correctly sir i have submitted mhm mm i will recheck but i have not received it i only received seven answers seven answer sheets and that includes sparsh so including sparsh there should be eight yours i have not got maybe your submission has not gone through maybe you'll have to reattempt it and send it i'll check again but i have not got your answers so i want others to discuss their doubts sujal and jeet what are your doubts and nikki what are your doubts and nandini if you have any more doubts quickly ask no sir no more doubts So why do you think you you scored incorrect answers also? Why do you think that happened? So most of them I get it wrong, especially mistakes. Why was it wrong? Are you confused about concepts? No, sir. I didn't check the options properly. I didn't check the options properly. Now you check the correct answers. Do you have any more confusions? No, sir. Nikki, how about you? so i was confused in some questions mm hmm did you get correct answers no no sir yeah maybe a submission didn't come you know maybe uh, when you pressed uh, submit i don't think it came through so after class please check it again 
try to give answers again. Okay, sir. And first compare with answers and then you tell me whether you have any doubts or points of concern. How about you, Sujil? Sir, I need to understand the meaning of the question, sir. <clears throat> Which questions? How many? Question 27, sir. The Do you want us to discuss now? Yeah, read it. Yes, the Peter blockage of both the RAM air input and the drain hole with the static port open causes the speed indicator too. Yeah. The, the front opening of the pitot tube is where the RAM air comes in. RAM air is the air free, freely coming to you straight. So if this is the opening of the pitot tube, the air coming here is the RAM air input. All stations, how do you read? Read you fine. Yeah. So I was talking about the RAM air inlet. What is the RAM air inlet? This is the front part. Okay. Yeah. So read the question again. A pitot blockage of both the RAM air input and the drain hole with the static port open causes the A speed indicated too. Yeah. So your RAM air input is blocked. It means you cannot get any dynamic pressure. Your drain hole is also blocked. It means whatever excess ice or whatever is there, it cannot escape. But your static vent is working. It means the instrument can still sense static pressure. Now the capsule of the ASI is being fed with total pressure out of which the dynamic pressure is not there but static pressure is there and the casing of ASI also has static pressure. Now this static pressure, that press static pressure has to cancel each other out to give dynamic pressure, but the dynamic pressure is not there. So this much we understand what's happening. Now, what are the options? Read a little low, react like an altimeter, read a little high, freeze at zero. Hmm. Read a little low, little high, react like an altimeter and show zero. What is the correct answer? Nandini? Read like altimeter. What is the correct answer, Mukul? React like altimeter. Sujal, what was your answer? Sir, I didn't get it, sir. So I simply marked freeze at zero. Freeze at zero. Vivek? Sir, F as an altimeter. Nikki? React, reacts like an altimeter. And Jeet? Altimeter. Hmm. 
why can anyone justify mukul sir if pto is blocked so the pressure inside the capsule will not change so it's fixed uh that means from it will not be reading zero it will be the last indicator if it's in level flight but uh it will the second option is yes read a little low since there is no change or it is increasing or decreasing so uh the capsule pressure inside will not decrease or increase so the option that also cannot be there it cannot read high but it it will read only high if uh if the uh, aircraft is descending so it will capsule will expand a little and it will read high or it will read low if uh if the aircraft is flying ascending it's a, even even hearing how do you read <laughs> everything on need you why we have to meet after the break so just message on the group 